Will you be made whole? Yes, yes sir. Yes. And I'm back in Satan. Yesterday I did something that I ain't had no business of doing. Similar to when the pastor was out there on that basketball court. <laughs> kind of twisted me up. All the way until this morning when I told my baby, I said, hey, how you feel about just going on in by yourself today? Mm. Yeah. And I said, so she fixed me one of them there good old sweet cups of coffee. <laughs> I said, I feel, I feel, I feel pretty good now. I feel pretty good now. Thank you, Jesus. But I know this is the healing station. <laughs> Verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, Watch out. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, mm. to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption mm. as sons. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Have a seat. Got to talk about mm. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. Right. A Christmas message. I'm trying yeah. to. Do a Christmas match. Certain things you obligated to do if you're a preacher. Amen. December the 20, anything got to be a Christmas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. And, and, but I see Jesus everywhere. Amen. So I, I feel Christmas all the time. That's right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I said good morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Good morning, Brady Bethesda, and Merry Christmas. Yes. Yes. I've been saying season's greetings all week. Happy holidays, because I don't want to offend nobody. Right? But here in the house, I say Merry Christmas. Uh, I pray that the same love that God shows this time of the year to the world, that you experience it in your house. Amen, right at, at this season. Amen. Okay. This is one of the most important. This ain't the Super Bowl of Christianity. The world wants to make you think that. It's very, very important. But it ain't resurrection, son. That's right. That's right. The, That's but I will. The power's in resurrection, son. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't, I'm trying to show Christmas. No one do that. Right. But I, I, let's don't get it twisted Hallelujah. and act like that Christmas is all Jesus was about. No. He's about much, much more than that. Amen. Amen. The birth of the Savior of the world. Christmas is about the birth of the Savior, but it's also, and I want you to think about this this morning, about the fulfillment of prophecy. In that something. Yes. yes. Right. The fulfillment, it wasn't just the beginning of something, yes. but it was the completion of something. Right there in Bethlehem was the completion of what a whole lot of people had prayed for and asked for and fasted for. And so I, I want you to think just for a second, somebody in this room who is the completion of previous prayer. My God, amen. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, you be honest in that you are doing some things that Grandmama prayed for. Amen. She might never got a chance to stay. Amen. She might never see it, but she had prayed for it. Yes. She said, Lord, when you was acting up, when you was young, right, and you was showing out, 
And grandma said, save it, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you knew she was praying that. Lord, just save it. Touch him, touch him, touch him, Jesus, touch him. Grandma went on to be with the Lord and you were still acting up. But here you sit. Yes. <laughs> As the completion of the prayer. Yes. All right, God. So the same way that each of us, in our own way, we are the completion of prayers. So too was Christmas. Yes. It was the completion of prayers, amen, amen. and prophecies that were in the Old Testament. So this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the timing of Christmas. The timing that comes along with Christmas. Uh, uh, the sermon in the sentence, if we want you to remember anything, that the power of God is often demonstrated through divine timing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The right thing at the wrong time still doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so it is, uh, a lot of us, he, he wants us to remember and to be mindful of his timing. That his timing is not your timing. Yeah. But his timing is always perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, because he knows the end from the beginning. And so as he's ordering things, he's ordering things with the end in mind. Yes. And so he's timed things based on the end in mind. I, I, I'm thinking back, for y'all know, y'all know I'm a basketball wacko, right? And so then back in 2008, some of y'all probably don't remember this, but there was a basketball tournament being held, the SEC, the Southeastern Conference. They had a basketball tournament. And this particular year, they held it in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. So this is March of 2018, I'm sorry, eight, pardon me, March 14th particularly. And, and it was the last game of the night, and it was playing, it was Mississippi State against Alabama. They were playing, like Mississippi State was supposed to kill them. Right. But for some reason, the game was close. Now, the, the, the coach of Mississippi State was an outspoken believer, a man named Rick Stanberry, who spoke of the Lord all the time. Amen. And, and, and Interestingly, on the other side, the coach of Alabama was a guy named Mike Goffey, who also was a believer. So we had two believers going against each other, because God don't care who wins the game. And, and but outspoken in that I have heard. Amen. And so the game is going back and forth, and for some reason the game is close. I'm talking about divine timing. The game is close. It ain't supposed to be. Mississippi State's supposed to kill it. They were favored by 15 points. But for some reason, the game was close. Nine seconds left in the game. Nine seconds left in the game. It's about 9, this point is about 9, 20, 25 in the evening. Game got five. They were up by three. Mississippi State was up by three points. Alabama had the ball. So the coach at Mississippi State said, foul them. That way they go to the line. They can only get two points. We get the ball back, we win the game. Real simple. Simple. So that's what Stan Ray said. I told him to foul them. The game, we, they, we throw the ball in. Do you know the boys don't foul them? Mm -hmm. Alabama bring the ball down the floor. Foul them. They not foul them. All of a sudden, they're supposed to give the ball to a guy named Bobby Humphrey, but he don't. He throws the ball to a guy named Michael Riles, who, by the way, his father is Bishop Riles. Mm. Michael had just got in the game. He don't normally play that much. They gave him the ball. He shoots his only shot of the whole game. With seconds left, they go in. Tied up, but tie ball game. Five minute overtime. Mm. Stanberry, and I'm not talking about the win and lose, watch this. Stanberry is not happy. He can't believe that this is happening. Uh -huh. Right? Mike Godfrey is also not happy because they didn't do what he said. Uh -huh. His team didn't run the play he wanted. Stanberry's team didn't do what he wanted. Mm. Right? And so as they go, <laughs> y'all, I don't know if y'all remember this now. As they go to the timeout, you start to hear this rumbling. The roof begins to shake. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the rafters begin to shake and bolts and things begin to fall from the sky because a tornado, the only tornado that ever hit Atlanta, mm. wow. hit Atlanta at 9.26 p.m. Mm. Right? There were folk who were leaving, going to the crowd, they were going outside, leaving the game, thinking it was over, but when Riles hit that shot, mm. They turned around and came back to their seat. And they sat down, and the biggest tornado to ever hit Georgia went right down the street outside the Georgia Dome. Whoa, wow. And so what ends up happening, when they came out, they talked about the boys didn't even know. They, in the gym, they didn't even know what was going on. They ran to the locker room, people are scared, water begins to cascade down stairways, it's, it's mayhem. When they come outside later on, and they see the carnage, mm. glass broken and, and 
street lights switched, smashed up, and cars twisted over on, on each other. When they see the devastation, they are amazed to find out that no one was killed. My God. No one was hurt. Now, if they would have not gone into overtime, there would have been thousands of people standing outside. But God had divine time. It's not by accident that you make you miss sometimes. Right. It's not by accident. So every time that things don't work out the way that you think they should work out, right. that doesn't mean that God's not working. That's right. Because you was worried about winning the game. God was worried about protecting 10,000. My God, yes. So I got to talk about in order to understand the divine, the divine purpose. In order to understand timing, you got to understand purpose. purpose. And what winning looks like. Yes. <laughs> Both of them teams wasn't no good. At the, the very next round, when they get to the NCAA tournament, Kentucky smashed both of them. <laughs> but the point was, at that moment, God had a different win. He has a different scoreboard than yes. you. Yes. So in order to understand divine timing, you got to understand divine purpose. purpose. Yes, that's right. You have to understand where the goal is in order to win the game. <laughs> now timing, <clears throat> a particular point or period of time when something happens. Now, Christmas, when Jesus came, he came in divine timing. Mm -hmm. yes. He understood the purpose. For you see, the Jewish people, they understood that a Messiah was coming. They had heard way back, they read way back in Genesis that a Savior was coming. Yes. Right? In Genesis 3 and 15, yes, okay. it said, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Amen. They were talking after, after the serpent had acted up and beguiled Eve and Adam had fallen, mm -hmm. all that stuff. The punishment that was given out, there's going to be beef in between you and him, mm -hmm. and, and that he, he's going to bruise you with his heel. So they knew from the use of the word his that a man was coming. Yes. That the Savior was going to be a man. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, but they wrestle with the same thing that we as believers wrestle with. Mm -hmm. And that is a simple question, Sean. Save me from what? Save me from what? Identifying what's truly binding me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, understand now, the people left uh, the basketball game mad. Mm -hmm. the, the Mississippi State people was upset until they found out that a tornado had <laughs> They, they chalked it all up until they realized until they had a different scoreboard. Yes. They got a chance to see God's scoreboard. Yes. Uh, amen. So the world, the world has a different scoreboard, and, but Jesus came down not for the Jewish scoreboard. Mm -hmm. You see? Because at that time, the Jews were under Roman control. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. They, were, they were under bondage. And so they thought, when you said save me, mm -hmm. that you was going to save me mm -hmm. from the Romans. Isn't that something? <laughs> understand. We can't under, I wrote it down again in green. We can't understand God's timing until you recognize his purpose. Yeah. Situation. A situation is a set of circumstances in which one finds oneself. Mm -hmm. Right? Condition is the state of something, especially with regard to its working order. The set of circumstances one finds oneself in Versus the state of something, especially with regard to the working order. See, one of it's how you feel about it. One is what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Get it? The difference is, I know this, God don't care about your situation. Mm -hmm. right? He didn't send his son for your situation. Right. He sent his son for your condition. My, 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 he my. sent his son my, so that you'll be able to do what you've been called to do. Yes, that's right. It's not where you are. It's what you're capable of doing. Right. Amen. So God does not concern himself with our situation, mm -hmm. our circumstance. And, and, and so some things, the problem is many of us get confused as to what is a situation mm -hmm. and what is a condition. Right. I do. Huh? Mm -hmm. some, some, some of us think that things that are just situations are conditions. Mm -hmm. Some of us think poverty is a condition. Some of us think sickness is a condition. No, no, but God said those are just situations. Those are circumstances that you find yourself in. If you don't believe me, have you ever been broke? 
<laughs> did you think you was gonna stay, bro? No. No. I did. I did. I didn't know where to. I told y'all I broke up with Praise the Lord. I didn't see no money coming from nowhere. And, and I was confused thinking that that was my condition. But God said, that's just your situation. I didn't send Jesus down for no situation. Because your situation can change. I tell you, okay, easy way to know the difference, Ed, is this. If you can get yourself out of it, it's a situation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Real simple. If you if you if somebody can help you, if there's a man on earth who can facilitate it for you, it's a situation. Yeah. Huh? But God sent Jesus down yeah. not for situations, that's right. but for conditions. Yeah, <laughs> Understand? All right. So so wow. <laughs> Christmas is about condition, not situation. In order to understand the timing of Jesus' birth, you have to recognize what he came to save us from. It wasn't the Romans. Matthew, the first chapter. See, this is what I love about the Bible. If you just read, I'm not going to embarrass nobody, but there, in, in my life, there's people that I love very much I'm trying to convince. If they will just read the book, the answer to the question that the teacher has written down. It's in the book. Why are you coming asking me? I haven't read the book since spring yet. You come and asking me, why don't you just read the book? I don't know why I'm talking to you. But in the book, in the book, in the Bible, Matthew, the first chapter, they explain, see, God was... Jesus was not a secret. We like to think that Jesus snuck into town. Uh -uh. Jesus coming was not a secret. God solving the condition is not a secret. That's right. Uh, so Matthew, the first chapter, the very first chapter, verse 21 of chapter 1, the angel is explained to Joseph exactly what Joseph is supposed to do. Exactly. So, so what, Joseph didn't have to guess. He said, come on, Mary. She will give birth to a son. Yes. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Jesus that's yes. right. Because he will save people from, from their sins. sins. Thank you, Lord. Right? We're still looking for a Roman. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to get out of it. No. He will save people mm -hmm. from, from their, their sins. sins. Okay. And he said, all this took place mm -hmm. to fulfill what the Lord had said the through the prophets. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, the situation... That, that Jesus was born into. The situation that the Jews were in is that they was living in the Jewish land outside of Jerusalem, a place called Judea. Mm -hmm. Right? And lived, that Judea means the land of Jews. Yeah. Judeo. Right. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the Roman emperor, he can't be everywhere, so he would assign his boys different spots. Mm -hmm. Sounds like somebody else that I know. He would put his boys there, whether they were qualified or not. Isn't that something? <laughs> and his boys got in there. And so he had one boy named Herod, Herod Antipas. And he made him in charge of Judea, made him the governor of Judea. Right? Now, Herod was ambitious. Right? He wanted to be a baby Caesar. So he started trying to build all the same stuff that Caesar had in Rome. He wanted to have that. He was living beyond his means. Praise God. He wanted a new car because his sister got a new car. Uh, right. He wanted to go to some fancy place because everybody else was gone. Right? right. So, so he begins to try to build aqueducts and fortresses and all these things in Judea like Caesar had built. And it cost a lot of money. Money that the Jews did not have. Yeah. So he began to tax them and tax them and tax them. So now local taxes went up crazy when Herod took over. So they had to pay Caesar because you're going to give Caesar. The Bible said, render unto Caesar. So Caesar going to get his, and now Herod wants some of his. That's the situation that the Jews find themselves born in. But, but, but wait, not just that. The neighbors, they had been, that this same area had been taken over by the neighbors to the north called the Assyrians. They had taken them over and whooped them for a couple hundred years. And the neighbors to the east, the Persians, had also come in at one point and whooped them for a couple hundred years. So these were people who were used to getting beat on. Isn't that something? Huh? This is the situation that Jesus found them in. Mm -hmm. 
found himself uh, being born into. Now, the reason that they was getting beat on is because every time a captor came and took over, mm -hmm. God would deliver them, and then they would try to rebuild the temple. For example, when the Assyrians came in, they made great big old stone temples, big tall 20-foot jumps. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord delivered them from Assyria, they knocked down the temples. Mm -hmm. Do you know the Jews tried to rebuild the temple mm -hmm. with the same stone? that the Assyrians had used. They tried to plant and replant the same fruits and vegetables that the Assyrians had planted, that God had pulled up. Oh yes, that's right. Huh? And, and so what's happening is, what's happening is, <laughs> we are doing the same thing. God has delivered us, and we're trying to build a new house with the same old stone. My God. God has, God has taken you out of a situation. Yes. And you try, as Rick and I always tease, you act like you're still in Capitol Heights. You try to do Capitol Heights on Upper Marlboro. It's not going to work. Because Capitol Heights was, it was different. And you see the young boys do it. The young boys walking down the street puffing on something. With their pants hanging there. Like they're doing something. I want to laugh be disrespectful. Huh? Where are you going? <laughs> the mean streets of, of you know, Woodyard Road. <laughs> Y'all don't really want no mean streets? You really want to be in captivity? You walk around all over the food like, what line? Your mama bought that shirt. Go sit down. You know, you don't think they rough. They want their mama's deck. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see the only people without decks you know, you understand. <laughs> so they're trying to be something that they're not. God has already delivered you out of there and you still acting like you're in there. And, and, and because you're acting like you're in there, God is upset. He's upset that you are that you're embracing that which I've delivered you from. So who is your God? Yeah. Who is the powerful deliverer, me or these rocks? Mm -hmm. uh, and then so, so what happens, what happens is God, because of their disobedience, they are separated from God. Mm -hmm. Separation from God is sin, that's what it is. And, and, and so understand, sin was their condition. They were sinners. Yes. That was the condition. That was the condition. They were under Caesar. That was the situation. Yes, right. But I was a sinner. That was my condition. Yes. And I told you that God sent Jesus for conditions, yes. not situations. Yes. See, see. So I want you to put it all together, Rick. They came in. They had a mistrustful and oppressive government. Mm -hmm. That's right. They had territorial disputes yes. with their neighbor. Yes. Does that sound familiar? My God. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had a corrupt government where no one could trust the leader. Oh my God. Oh my God. This was 700 years before Jesus was ever born. My God. I'm telling you, Donald Trump did not invent corruption. Yeah. It did not begin with that. See, some of us forgot. We cry about 45. We act like he, this just started. I don't know why he's so crazy. Y'all remember Richard Nixon? Yeah. Was he not equally? Okay. Equally crazy. Well, it was into this situation that the prophet Isaiah, and that's why who my, who my preacher was preaching earlier today, a preacher Roman was preaching. Yes, man. Amen. Yes. Isaiah begins, this is the land that he came into. Yes. This was the situation uh -huh. yes. that he was uh -huh. prophesying into. Right. See, Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus. My God. Amen. And he began to talk. His daddy was a prophet named Amos. Amos, pardon me. Right. And he reigned right after the Assyrians. Remember I told you the Assyrians came in and whooped up on them. And in chapter 8 of Isaiah, we're not going to go there, but in chapter 8 of Isaiah, they talked about all of the darkness in the land when Assyria was run, was beating yes. them up. All the depression that the oppression had brought. And how sad it was. And how nobody could move forward in life. Mm -hmm. But turn real quickly to the ninth chapter Isaiah. of Isaiah. Right. That's what we want to spend a little time. I thought 
For a preacher, when you when you preach last wrong, you, you gotta be careful. People preach your message before you get out. <laughs> First lady is good at doing that. <laughs> but that just means you're saying what God wants you to say. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. I say, what are we about to preach? And now all of them preach. <laughs> I ain't got no more. I do got some other stuff, but I can't say it because y'all already did. Now, come on, put your hands and praise God for our young people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I honor you all this morning. Amen. Each of you, each of you. So after chapter 8 is talking about darkness and depression of the people, here comes Isaiah chapter 9. Yes. Chapter 9, chapter nine yeah. of the book of Isaiah. Verse 1 says, nevertheless, meaning in spite of the previous condition, that all of that was true, nevertheless, <laughs> the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, in Galilee, and the nations. Again, he's talking about the darkness. Yes. That dark, it, yeah, it was bad, but it's over. God's saying, I don't know who that's for. Yeah, it, it was bad. Yes, it was bad, but it's over. Yeah, daddy left. That's over. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was addicted, but now that's over. Yes. <laughs> we used to fuss and fight, yes. but now that's oh, over. Yes. 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 Nevertheless, when you're public speaking, young people, a guy named Josh Ornstein taught me this trick years ago when I was on the debate team. Yes, I was on the debate team. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. He said, Brian, if you ever get stuck, just say nevertheless. nevertheless. Don't say uh, uh, just say nevertheless. <laughs> and I do it every Sunday, y'all don't even catch <laughs> Praise God. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. I was going to you, nevertheless. It worked, it worked, it does work. So we go to verse two. He says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Yes. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath light shined. The same ones who was depressed, upon them shall light shine. Yes. Now, this is, a, this is going to be, these words are going to be echoed again in the fourth chapter of Matthew. Uh -huh. uh, interestingly, interestingly, it's at that point when Jesus is being tempted of Satan that they say they have seen a great light. Uh -huh. So y'all can write that down. Matthew 4, 14. It's going to be in there again. But go to verse 3. He says, Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy, the joy before thee, according to the joy of the harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. That word not is not supposed to be in there. One of those print things, one of those translational things that they scared to take out. But it really doesn't even make sense in there. But it's in there, praise God. It says, Thou hast multiplied the nation, and I'm going to take it out, increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy of the harvest. Some people are happy when they get stuff. Yes. According, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, when they do something. When you get to do something, get victorious or, or get honored, or you get something, a lot of people can be joyous. He says, verse 4, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Every word in the Bible counts, I told you. Now the word staff, y'all know what a staff is. It's a little stick that the shepherds guide the sheep with. So the staff represents guidance or direction. See, what he's saying is when I was in darkness, I was under the direction of the devil. Yes. And I followed the devil's instructions. But that's over. Oh, yes. He said, when the light is shining, I no longer have to follow the direction yes. of the devil. Right. So he said, that's why he says, the burden, he said that he broke the yoke of his burden and the staff, the guidance of his shoulder. Now, y'all know the rod, the word rod means authority mm -hmm. or correction. Right, right. right. And so he goes on to say, not only do I not have to, that I've broken the guidance of his shoulder, but the authority of his oppressor. The same way he did for a guy named Gideon yes. back in a place called Midian. Right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. See, Jesus don't have to point at nothing new. He can go back to the old blessing. Right. For there is no temptation None. having taken you except that which is common unto man. Yeah, that's right. But God who is faithful will in the temptation make a way of escape that you might... Yes. I, I like that one. I memorized that one. Y'all tell. Yeah. I've had to say that a whole lot of yeah, times in my life. Uh, there's nothing new, guys. Yeah. I tell y'all, I tell y'all all the time, come boys. If it was y'all in college and y'all gonna graduate from college and mama's gonna come and cry and all that stuff, I'm telling you that. <laughs> right? But I want you to think back on sitting in these chairs when you're in college. Mm. Tell your children that this is how we made it over. Because what they're referring to here, he said that you're going to break away from the guidance of the devil. You're going to break away from the oppression of the devil. The same way this guy named Gideon. Mm -hmm. He took just a few guys and whooped a big army. Yeah. You're going to do great things with Jesus by your side. Yes, amen. 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 No, no, no. The big thing also is that it says that they were productive. They multiplied mm -hmm. back in verse 3. God, when God delivers us, we are able to be fruitful. Amen. It's not enough just to be out of jail, but I have to be out of jail and able to take care of myself. Yes, amen. Uh, when God restores us, that's why restoration comes from God. Mm -hmm. right. Deliverance can come from the governor. Mm -hmm. He can pardon you and you can come out, but he can't restore you to your family. That's right. He can't restore your reputation. Only God can restore us. And so what he's saying in verse 3 is that after the darkness, God's going to restore you. Yes. And you will be productive again. My God. Amen. Amen. So, so I'm, I'm going fast. Let me go. Come eat. Come eat. But y'all shout it. Saying, y'all be looking at the YouTube like, can't we talk? Verse 5 says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and the garments rolled in blood. Those are garments rolled in blood are soldiers' clothes. The defeated so in those days, when you beat a soldier and you killed him, you took his bloody clothes and kept them as memories. Huh? But they said the dirty, the bloody clothes will be rolled up and put on a heap and used as fire. All of the past defeats will be forgotten about. Yes. Huh? By verse 5 now. We came from darkness in chapter 8. We're no longer captive. We're now fruitful. And, and, and all of the old mistakes and the defeats of the past have been forgotten. Yes, thank you, Lord. Why? Now, how could this possibly be? I don't understand, Isaiah. What are you talking about? Why would this happen? Verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us. The reason all these things are happening is because unto us a son is given. Now, why would it have to be a son? Ladies, because chapter 3 of Genesis said, You shall bruise his heel. Everything matters. Everything matters. It had to be a boy. Don't mean that God don't love girls. Right. But he called boys to be the head yes. and the covering. Yes. And guess what? We have the responsibility. Yes. If something go wrong, we got to an answer for it. Yeah, and so he said, I'm going to send restoration in a man's seat. Mm -hmm. huh? So unto us, so we can have had a daughter born unto us to fulfill the prophecy. It had to be a man. That's why I said unto us, a son, son. is given. Is given. Uh, it's important. It's, it's important. We got to make sure that we get this in this time of political correctness that we don't forget God trying to be politically correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone, anyone who knows Brian King will tell you that I am not a sexist man. My wife, I look at my wife as my partner, maybe 51%. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, so you, you're not, ladies, y'all, I'm not a guy who says, ladies, guys, I don't do all that. But the Bible said that the man is the head. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You see that? And by the same Bible that says unto us a son, the same Bible that says I can do all things, through, it says that the man is the head. Yeah. 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 The Bible said, wives, submit yourself. Uh -oh. That's the new preaching. Yeah. 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 You got the coins, Harry. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Because 
guess what, Tria? The same next verse says, Husband, submit yourself unto your wife. That's right. And all of you submit yourself one to another, for the Lord resisteth the proud, but granted grace to the humble. Yeah, say that too. Come on, if the Bible likes sexes, we gotta read the book. That's right. You take one verse, and all of a sudden, right? Right, right. 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 I told you, Coke said, figures don't lie, but liars do fake. <laughs> you can make this say whatever you want it to say, but you gotta read them. So the read the reason that all of these things, the darkness will turn to light, that, that evil and oppression will turn to restoration and victory, is because unto us a son is born. Now, why did I say unto me? Unto you, why is it singular? He said us because Isaiah wanted you to know he was talking to Israel and Judah. Yes. Yes. Too much division in the church. Too much think we have a monopoly on Jesus. That's right. That's right. I don't have no monopoly on Jesus. That's right. It's people who don't look nothing like us who have Jesus. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's people who go to church with no shoes on. They got Jesus. Right. So St. John ain't about Jesus. Right. People go to church in, in rags that got Jesus. Yes. That's, that's why he says, unto all of us, right, right. Yes. the Son is given. Yes. Right? That, so, so stop trying to act like you just it's just yours. Yeah. That he's just he did all this just for you. Right. He's turning the lights on in Africa. He's right. turning the lights on in El Salvador. What? He's turning the lights on in Asia. Wherever men are in darkness, a son is given. Yes. Uh, this child is born, a son is given. And the word government. government. To the government. Now that interesting, that word is Mishra. In Hebrew, it does not mean ruling class. It means empire. empire. Yeah. It means not only the decisions, but the influence. Yeah. Uh, the influence of Jesus Christ shall be all over the world. Yeah. In communist nations, Jesus shall be there. Yeah. In democratic nations, Jesus shall be there. Oh, yeah. Where they speak Spanish, where they speak Wolof, where they speak English, where they don't say nothing, Jesus will be there because yeah. the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulders. Oh, yes. The influence. My God, shall be upon and peace. There shall be no end. <laughs> now, now, I got it. This blessed me, y'all. I looked up the word peace because I thought peace leave you that peace. Shalom. Y'all know it was shalom. Y'all was getting deep, right? <laughs> yeah, pass. I know that. You're right. But shalom does not mean peace. Shalom means wholeness. Yeah, it does mean wholeness. Yep. It does not mean the absence of conflict. Mm. It means wholeness within conflict. Mm. Ah. I'm gonna let that. That's my dramatic pause for the minute. Yes. It, 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 it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna have problems at work. It means that I'm gonna have wholeness in the middle of the problem. Yes. That means that me and the wife was never gonna argue or I mean, have intense fellowship again. <laughs> Shall remain whole in the midst of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he says, <laughs> He says, This wholeness shall have no end. <laughs> His name shall be called wonderful, yes. meaning beyond our comprehension. Oh, yes. Uh, he's going to do things you can't even figure out. Doesn't he oh, do them all the time? Yes, yes. He's going to do things according to his divine timing. Yes. And it's, it's not going to make any sense until you see the tornado outside. Right. <laughs> he shall be called counselor. Oh, yes. Now, the counselor, the difference. <laughs> Preach, the, the, the difference is this a lawyer is a one way thing. Yes. Lawyers give advice yes. and that's it. And then they go back in the house. Yes. But a counselor, yes. a counselor is one who abides with you throughout the process. Yes. A lawyer, you can go and ask, what should I do? And pay him $150 and he'll tell you, you go do it yourself. That's a lawyer. But a counselor is one who will go with you. Yes. And he will inquire of the judge of timelines. And he will inquire of this, inquire of that, and make sure that your process runs smooth. That's why he's not going to be called a lawyer. He's going to be called a counselor. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> the mighty God, the everlasting Father, yes. and the Prince of Holiness. Prince of Holiness, my God. 
A mighty, the mighty God. Even, yes. even back then. How is it then that a son, because a son's going to be given, how can a son be the everlasting father? Yes. Because what does it mean to be father? What does Abba mean? It means provider, protector, pretender. Right? So he's going to be the provider and the protector and the way maker and the originator of all good things. So in that role, he will be the father. Huh. We, oh, I'm done, I'm done. The prince of wholeness. And of the increase of his empire and the wholeness, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, there we go with the prophecy again. Remember, David, the whole man. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yes. Uh, Bethlehem is the city of David. It wasn't by accident that he, Jesus was not from Bethlehem. Jesus didn't hang out in Bethlehem. That's right. He had to go to Bethlehem because the prophecy had said that he must be of the seed of David. Right? He could have been born somewhere else. There were other more convenient places. I want you to understand in your life that some of the things you're going through is so that the word of God in your life can be made manifest. That's right. You had to go down a &T because God has a work for you down there. Amen. Uh, it, could, it couldn't have been Morgan. Couldn't have been Howard. Couldn't have been somebody else you might have wanted to go to because God said, I need you in A&T because the prophet said, the son of David. Uh, verse 7, it said, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. Mm -hmm. My God, the zeal of the Lord, yes. the army of the Lord, shall perform this. How are we going to get peace? The armies of God. Yeah. See, I, I need y'all to understand that we have angels watching over us. Yes. We don't talk about that no more. We let Hollywood talk about that. Yes. For some reason, we want to let movies talk about that. But the Bible says we have angels in heaven. Yes. There's all different kinds of angels. Yes. It's not just little fat baby yes. angels yes. shaking you to sleep. Yes. But there's warring angels. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. When the devil has an attack against yes. them, the Bible yes. said that yes. the armies of the Lord, yes. the zeal of the Lord shall perform. Yes. Yes. I don't know about that. <laughs> yes. Woo! When, when Elijah was talking, he said, he prayed that if then some would see, look up and see the armies of the Lord. That's that right. there were chariots. Oh, oh yes. See, we don't talk about that no more. That ain't, it ain't Christmas. We're supposed to be talking about chestnuts. <laughs> Roasting on open fire. And all of that is good. But when he sent Jesus down, he also sent the army down. Oh, yes. <laughs> he didn't just send him down to rock you to sleep, but he came down to fight against the devil that's trying to get you. Because in the divine timing of God, he knew that you were going to need some angels to fight you. He knew, see, when he sent Jesus down, he knew that this was war time. Yes. He wasn't just sending you down in happy time. He wasn't just sending you down to drink eggnog. He wasn't just sending you down to ride in slaves. But he knew that at Christmas time is the number one suicide time of the year. Yes. So I sent down to bring the peace, the wholeness of God. I sent my baby down to bring peace to this situation. Yes. Why? Because I know the time, that's what you need. So you're going to sit there and you're going to wonder, why don't I have 12 to play with? Why didn't I have why didn't mama come home for, come for Christmas? Preacher. Why couldn't I do this and why could I do that? Yes, but there's a tornado outside your life. Yeah. You're worried about the scoring sign. But outside your life, there's all kinds of things going on. And God said, I'm sitting in my divine time. Come on, yeah. preacher. Yeah. I'll sit my son down to fix your condition. Yeah. Yeah. Your situation. Yeah. 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 I think you got to fix it. Too many tears over a situation. Yeah. Right there. And you're not even seeing that there's a tornado yeah. outside yeah. of your life. Yeah. My God, my God. You worried about how you go about a child, George, and you don't recognize he's smoking a drug. There's a tornado outside of your life. I need mean, I you to understand that he came down through 42 generations for the purposes of making you free. Yes, it to bind you, to loose you from the binds of your condition. Yes. And the only condition that grapples us is sin. That's right. Uh, we all got sin. Yes. Uh, and God came to deliver us from sin. He did not come to buy you a new car. Sit up, folks. He did not come to give you a position. He did not, my God, my God. He didn't come to give you a big old church. He, he came that you might have 
life. And that you may have life more abundantly. And because you know you don't know where you're going, I'm going to make them a counselor to go with you. Because I know that you're so crazy that you can't stand to be happy. I'm going to make them be peace, wholeness, that passes even your own understanding. Come tell the truth. Some of us, we don't even know why we're not crazy. Right. We're not sure. Some of us ain't sure. We might be a little bit crazy. But when I look back over my life, I can't understand why I'm not in St. Elizabeth. I should have done something crazy by now. All my friends did. Yes. Right. Nobody would have looked. I, 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 I praise God. I praise God for my nephew, my nephew Omari Rodden Brooks, who was a recent graduate of Morgan State University. Top for my nephew, praise the Lord. Omari graduated. And I sat there, and you know, Pastor, I cry all the time. So I sat there at Morgan graduation, and tears began to well up in my eyes. As I looked out, because I know all of this boy has gone through. He had a million reasons to quit. Yes. He did not. <laughs> he had a million reasons why I should have let go. Yes. Mama passed away when he was young. Could have let go. Yes. Huh. Daddy gone. Could have let go. Yes. Money got funny. Could have let go. Yes. All, of, all of these tribulations and strife, but there was only a couple reasons to hold on. Yes. And so when I saw the boy graduate, the Lord says, he held on. Yeah. Ah, yeah. He wasn't brilliant. He didn't have to be brilliant. All he had to do was hold, hold on. on. That's right. Hallelujah. God said the same thing to us today yeah. in the spirit. I'm not asking you to be super Christian. I'm asking you to hold on. Oh my God. I'm not asking you to have all the answers. I'm asking you to hold on. I'm not asking you to be better than somebody else. I'm not asking you to wear this kind of clothes or go this kind of I'm asking you to hold, hold on. on. When hold the on. storms of life come, I just need you to hold, hold on. on. Hey, hey, hey. And so I thank God. And then, now this is not Pastor Kim. This is just plain old Brian. Yes. I thank God that when the wind blows, that I can hold on to God. Yes. See, the old folks used to say he was a leaning pope. Yeah. Yes. They don't talk about leaning. I can't talk. That's don't do that. <laughs> Woo! The old folks used to say the Lord was a leaning post. The word of God is a strong tower yes. that the righteous run in yes. and they are safe. safe. Mm -hmm. Huh? But you gotta be righteous. Yes. Raggedy can't run in and be safe. Mama. Raggedy's not safe nowhere. Yeah. Let's be clear. Raggedy can't come to church and be safe. Right. Come on, son. Okay. I'm gonna stay over this way. Well, I know you over here. I'm come over. You can't do anything you want to and just run up in church and think you're safe. Right. That's right. Because the Bible says the righteous run in. That's right. And they are safe. Right. So we have to be. Holy, here I go again. Holy. He came here so that we could be holy. holy. And, and guess what? The next time he come back, he's coming back for a church Amen. without a spot or a wrinkle. That church got to be holy. holy. He didn't say where it got to be. He didn't say it had to be in a building. It could be in a school. It could be in this building. It could be in a big cathedral. Wherever it might be, it got to be holy. holy. When the Lord increased us, we can have 10,000 people. We can have a building as big as FedEx Field. It don't matter if we're not holy. That's right. He didn't just say the pastor holy. He said with a whole church without one spot or one wrinkle. Help us and he has come to give us the tools to be just that. that yes. Just that. Mm 